It's a big place, getting bigger and busier. Twenty-four million people, that's a tenth of Indonesia's entire population, call the capital Jakarta home. It's big. It's amazing. It's a lively country. It's buzzing with a renewed sense of wealth and prosperity. Many of the country's 60,000 millionaires live here and do business here. Even being a billionaire is a boom industry. They've doubled in number to 20 in just two years. Of course, being conspicuously wealthy in crowded and jammed Jakarta has its challenges. And so the super rich have to take their supercars to private racetracks to play. While a growing army of fashionistas can head to one of the city's private fashion shows for their expensive and very exclusive designer wear. People think high rolling socialites in Jakarta should have fancy cars, nice apartments, fabulous clothes, plastic surgery. For many of Indonesia's showy, moneyed elite, it's see and be seen, and a culture of get rich any way you can. Welcome. Andre Franke is one of Indonesia's leading designers of the kabaya, a traditional Javanese blouse. He's couturier to the rich and powerful, to the famous and infamous alike. From his studio tucked away in Jakarta's southern suburbs, he's gained a unique perspective on the extraordinary and sometimes tainted lives of Jakarta's well-to-do. Sangat sangat fantastic, like a sport car, like a Ferrari, Maserati, and then Lamborghini. Sometimes dia bisa sewa untuk private jet untuk pergi ke luar negeri seperti itu. One of Andre's customers, Ade, has popped in for a fitting. You also have a nice dress. Secret. <laughs> I like all his design. In my opinion, he made Indonesian traditional dress. Very beautiful. This is the real one. <laughs> Ade is typical of Andre Frankie's clientele. Maybe the cutting. Or... She's one of a loyal group of big spending women with a passion for fashion. We're going to the movies together, dinner, see fashion show, and also to Bali, traveling in Indonesia, and and board. But it's not really slim. There's plenty of fun, mischief and gossip. And right now, there's no end of scandal. Jakarta is transfixed by two major criminal dramas exposing the dark side of high finance Indonesia style. And the central characters happen to feature as models in a lavish publication promoting Andre Frankie's flamboyant designs. Are these real diamonds? Yeah, real diamonds. Really? <laughs> Nothing fake? <laughs> Nothing. This is Melinda D, a social queen bee and a big time banker. This is also Melinda uh, D. Melinda again. She might normally be here in Andre's studio being fitted for a spectacular garment, only she's in jail right now, awaiting trial. Maggie. More on Melinda D later. But first, let's go straight to the top. Miranda. Miranda Gultam. Miranda Gultam. Yeah. Miranda Gultam was one of Indonesia's most influential figures, a deputy governor at the country's central bank, Bank Indonesia. Brilliant blue. Brilliant lady, Miranda. She's a very nice lady also, but quite strong and protective. Are you surprised that she's in controversy? Yeah. <laughs> Well, fashion show, of course, is, is a side work, you know, but my main work is more on economics issues. 
She's as well connected as she is well dressed, rubbing shoulders with the children of former president Sahato. They sponsored this recent Andre Frankie fashion show. But these days, Miranda Goltum doesn't spend as much time as she'd like by the catwalk. She's starring as a witness in the corruption court in a case focusing on how she rose so high in the central bank. In 2004, Miranda Goltum was nominated by the then president, Megawati Sukarno Putri, to be deputy governor of Bank Indonesia. Prosecutors say her election win was assured when someone paid politicians from Megawati's party and their allies $2.8 million in traveller's cheques to vote for her. Four politicians are already in jail for accepting the bribes. Well, I have sympathy to them because it's not clear where the money comes from and what's the money for. Is it because they are, he, they are electing me or is it for election, which is, it was the year of election? It's not been proven yet. No one's been charged with paying the bribes. In fact, it's one of the gaping holes in the case. For her part, Miranda continues to insist she knows nothing. Why should I bribe them? Logically, uh, I shouldn't bribe them, right? Because automatically they already supported me. Isn't it and just part of the system, the way things work? No, I don't think so. I never give money. I never give money for anything. As for Miranda's woes, in social light circles, they're viewed simply as one of the pitfalls of power and politics. Maybe that's the Indonesian political, you know, that... The way things work. Yeah. We don't know the white or grey or black. That's political Indonesia. Always in the shadows. Yes. <laughs> If shadowy affairs permeate Indonesia's top financial authority, it won't be a surprise to hear they've infiltrated the whole banking system. Ibu Malinda D. And that brings us back to Melinda D. Melinda D was a star at one of Andre's high society fashion parades. For 22 years, she worked for the US-based financial giant Citibank rising to become a senior customer relations manager. It's Melinda like this. Andre's dresses sell for between one and $10,000 a piece. Melinda D owned 20 of them. You made these for Melinda? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Pink's her favorite color, I Yeah, pink is her favorite color. Melinda D is one of the clients. Very cute. <laughs> They come here with a bodyguard and with the Hermes bag and then uh, with the nice diamond and all of the things with the nice watch. <laughs> when Melinda D burst onto the scene, she quickly had heads turning and tongues wagging. Three years ago, with very nice style, we call Barbie. You know Barbie? Like a doll, because everything is very perfect, not like me. <laughs> this is perfect, perfect, everything perfect. That's what we call Barbie. Melinda D. cukup exist di high-end society. Apalagi dia mempunyai big press. Everybody know her. <laughs> I was asking a friend of mine, who is that girl with that big boobs and things like that, you know, because I feel uneasy to see a person uh, that so, so striking in a negative sense. 
You thought she was a bit vulgar? Yeah. Not a bit, a lot. A lot. Yes. Having barged her way into the ranks of Jakarta's elite, Melinda D persuaded hundreds of clients with a minimum $50,000 to spare to open priority banking accounts with Citibank. She offered a service where there were no queues and few questions asked. Melinda made a fortune for Citibank and, along the way, managed to acquire a portfolio of personal assets beyond the wildest dreams of a humble bank employee, including five luxury homes. It wasn't just big houses and high fashion. Melinda D maintained a stunning collection of luxury cars. For all appearances, she was completely in tune with the high rollers. A sweet sound, but one Melinda D's not likely to hear for quite a while. It turned out to be just a short step from the catwalk to the walk of shame. Early this year, a customer complained that Melinda made unauthorised withdrawals from his account. She's now in jail awaiting trial for allegedly stealing around $3 million from her clients. Her lawyer, Batara Simbalon's defence doesn't appear to be helpful. He says she simply borrowed the money from her clients to invest elsewhere. Biasanya tuh Malinda misalkan pakai dulu uang ini. Sebenarnya kan dia juga dapat banyak uang dari luar. Entah itu bonusnya, entah itu keuntungan-keuntungan dia yang lain lah ya, yang kita. Nah, biasanya ini diganti sama dia. Eh? Not only did the city banker convince her clients to sign blank transaction forms, the bank itself failed to properly supervise her activities and it ignored a rule designed to stop fraud and money laundering. Malinda itu anak emas City Bank karena dia sudah berkali-kali mendapatkan penghargaan dan setiap tindak tanduk dia tidak pernah ada hukuman dari City Bank. For City Bank, the Melinda D affair is a public relations nightmare, but for newspaper editors, including the Jakarta Post's Dimas, it's a rare combination of sobering business news and tabloid gold. It's actually a financial story which hits home to every economist and housewife at the same time. It also becomes interesting because supposedly with this so many billions of rupiah, um, I think only two or three people have actually come out and said, oh yeah, um, I was one of her victims, which leads again to questions about um, who were they actually? It turns out some of Melinda's high rollers were actually former government officials. If it's public officials, definitely they would not come out because then you're not of this high net worth group. They shouldn't have their money. They shouldn't have that sort of money, yes. Yeah, yeah that also a uh, big question, uh, not only for me, but also for, uh, for the public also, yeah. yeah. The anti-money laundering agency began to ask, was Citibank effectively a clearinghouse for ill-gotten gains, undermining the fight against corruption? We want to know why so many former government officials is in the private banking of this bank. Are you concerned that the banks, and in this case Citibank, didn't want to know the answer? <laughs> yeah, the Citibank not give the sufficient uh, answer to us about this. Eh? Mereka enggak penting dananya dari mana, yang penting ada simpanannya, simpanan di banknya. Citibank wouldn't be interviewed for this program. When the central bank investigated, it found widespread problems not just at Citibank, but across Indonesia's private banking sector. It banned Citibank from recruiting new high rollers for a year, and it imposed tough new rules on the whole industry. But Citibank, 
is in even deeper trouble. While it was losing millions at the top end and not even noticing, at the bottom end, its heavy-handed recovery of debt has brought a dark cloud over the bank and the whole banking system. It's the end of 40 days of mourning for Essie Rinaldi and her two daughters, Chitra and Grace. They're visiting the grave of their loving husband and father, Erzan Okta. Before he died, Erzan Okta had accrued a credit card debt of $5,000. Six debt collectors working on contract for Citibank showed up at the family home. Takut mereka kan cuma punya otot ya. Mereka nggak punya brandnya nggak ada isinya. Jadi kan kita takut, takut tahu nanti kalau misalnya dia blunder blunder, taunya anak kita di sandra diapain kan gitu kan. Saya takutnya kayak gitu. The next day, Erzan Okta went to his Citibank branch. He was ushered in to a debt collection counselling room called the Clio Room. What happened inside is hotly contested, but what's certain is that Erzan Okta wound up dead on the floor. Itu bukan disambar geledek lagi. Melayang. Kita udah udah bulat bulatan lu tiga tu. Tempat tidur, papa, papa, kotoran. Yang paling gede itu, Grace. Papa aku jadiin kita anak yatim, mana ya? Kata dia, dia nak kita anak yatim. Erzan Okta's death touched a raw nerve with the public constantly bombarded by banks pushing credit. I think it hits at the heart of most Indonesians. Almost everyone has been offered a credit card and almost everyone has been telephoned or uh, visited by a debt collector. Very special one because he's supposed to... The drama grew when Erzan Okta's family turned to celebrity lawyer Otto Cornelius Caligus. What's this, but Suharto, owned by the president. This is his yes, golf Yes, 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 yeah. Patar, golf patar. O.C. Caligas worked for the former dictator, Sahato when he was accused of corruption. It works. In fact, he's fond of brandishing all sorts of powerful connections. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is Obama, right? You're in the Oval Office? Yes, I know, yeah. Oval room, Oval room. O.C. Caligas advised the family to sue Citibank for more than $300 million and ordered the exhumation of Okta's body. The government's pathologist and police issued conflicting autopsy reports. The first noted serious bruises, the second blamed Okta's death on a stroke. Two different contradictionary autopsy report. Of course, questionable for me. Why happen it is not done in a legal and proper manner? You think there's a cover-up? Uh, yes, this, that, that's for certain, a cover-up. The family's pathologist performed an autopsy beside the grave and confirmed their worst fears. mar. <laughs> The cause of Okta's death is still unresolved. But his widow, Essie, has become a lightning rod for concern about big banks and their handling of bad debt. Memang mereka udah banyak ngalamin. Banyak 
orang yang ngalamin seperti itu, tapi yang diteror-teror yang seperti ada yang sempat setruk. Octa's case throws the spotlight on Jakarta's underbelly, where banks and big business engage standover men to do their dirty work. A part of a main ex-criminal, a part of a person who doesn't have any work, but at least can intimidate, can make brutality, I mean, against the debtor. Thugs and the unemployed. The unemployed, you see, yes. I mean, they come from a dark world of the society. The debt collectors working for Citibank were questioned by the police and are now in custody. Citibank says they did nothing wrong, but at the same time, it argues it's not responsible for their actions because they were contractors, not bank employees. Citibank, karena dia meninggal di situ, dia datang ke situ dengan niat baik dan meninggal di situ, dan ternyata pada saat dia autopsi memang dia dianiaya di situ. Okta's death triggered a wave of sanctions against Citibank. It's been forced to hire 1,400 in-house debt collectors after it was banned from hiring contractors for a year. It's also been banned from issuing new credit cards for two years and from opening new branches for a year. Whether it's the darker alleys of the debt collectors or the Ferraris and Porsches of Melinda. It just shows how acceptable it is in this country to make money by any means, by, by somewhat questionable uh, methods. And as we've seen, the questionable methods go right to the top. It's not only the Miranda Gultum bribery affair that sullied Bank Indonesia, but a history of endemic vote buying and influence peddling. Central bank governors, their deputies and senior officials have been jailed for crimes including corruption, misappropriation of funds and bribing politicians to pass laws on the running of the bank. The culture in the past, it's not only in parliamentary people, but almost across the board that in Indonesia they don't observe the rule. Authority means money. Authority means uh, you have the authority to do whatever you want to do. And bribing is very, very common. And it's taken its toll on Miranda Gultum. But she's determined to continue playing a role in the economic future of her country. It's a very unpleasant time for me. It hurts my feeling, it hurts my children's and my husband's feeling, my family's feeling, but they all supported me but they, because they believe that I didn't do anything. I didn't give money, I didn't ask people to give money, I didn't promise anything. I really want this to be solved and be as transparent as possible. The big credit rating agencies are just one step away from recommending investment in Indonesia. When that happens, billions more will flow into one of the most corrupt economies on earth. <laughs> yeah, that's our problem, yeah? Corruption is a big problem in Indonesia. 